Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you, thank you. Okay, uh, let's continue on this uh, biomass chapter. Okay, I think we have uh, gone through this uh, advantage of biomass. It's a general advantage that we have compared to, um, the different methods uh, to convert biomass to the uh, electricity. Okay, this is a general advantage of biomass, which the mainly we have the carbon neutral and to reduce the waste. Okay, and then there's actually the disadvantage of biomass is um, have much higher impact than the advantages. Okay, that's why uh, biomass is not actually widely used as a power generation. It can be used as a cooking, as a heat generation, but quite rare to use as a power generation in a huge field. Okay, so the reason is first, uh, biomass always have the lower energy density compared to fossil fuel. You can see that actually the conversion process of biomass uh, from raw material into the electricity is very similar to fossil fuels, but it has much lower energy density. And this will increase the transportation cost. Okay. And then second, uh, this have the solid difficult to handle. Uh, biomass mostly in the solid form and in the different different shape. That's why it's quite difficult to handle compared to the fossil fuels, which is the petrol and gases. But of course, you compare coal, it has a similar issue, like which has a solid difficult to handle. Okay, uh, when the fuel is in the solid form, uh, other than handling of they still have one problem uh, which related to the air fuels mixture. As we know that we want to burn something, we need to mix the oxygen with the fuels. But when the fuels is a solid or especially uh, very big in the size or volume, then definitely the air fuels mixture will not be done properly. And it will cause the uh, incomplete combustion. Okay. And then next is the high water content. This is a uh, uh, available in all type of the uh, for, sorry all type of the biomass they definitely have the water content because it's uh, organic material and mostly it's bad even you feel that it's dry but it still have maybe 10 percent of water or moisture content but fossil fuels almost have zero moisture content so in this case uh, the energy needed uh, to evaporate all the water or all the moisture before it can be used as the fuse. So it will waste of energy because of this uh, high water content. And then it's also competing used as a high value food stock. Uh, this one is referred to the oil, uh, the, the organic oil like uh, palm oil. Okay. Uh, mostly the biodiesel used in Euro country are produced from the palm oil. And palm oil, as you know, is also uh, a high value food stuff. So you are burning the energy which is competing with the food. Okay. And then we also have the issue on the commercial issue, which is the biomass feed stock. Feed stock. So it means that uh, how you get the supply of biomass. And remember that this is not a high value energy. So the transportation is the one of the consideration. You won't uh, get a lorry of the biomass and send from Johor to Kuala Lumpur just to produce energy. It's totally not worth for that. Okay, so and then availability where we have this kind of the biomass field and where we need the energy supply. Must be national supply and demand and also the cost. Currently the cost is definitely you can see that the process is similar to the combustion process of the fossil fuels but it get less power output. And you will create other uh, uncertainty, something that because of the impurity of the biomass fuel, it will cause a shutdown of the power plant, and your power plant need a uh, schedule maintenance more frequently. Okay, so you need higher maintenance cost. Okay, fossil fuels and biomass using the same system, but for biomass, you need more maintenance, you need uh, you generate less power output. So end up with biomass energy is much more expensive than the fossil fuels. Okay, and then it's difficult to get a suitable site. Whenever you have bio, wherever you have the biomass, normally 
there's a rural area where not much uh, electricity is needed. Okay, and then production technology, they still a lot of uh, technology or problem to, to solve. Okay, and then uh, we have a class of qualified owner operator and project financing. Okay, this is a problem uh, of the biomass energy, but all of these commercial issues actually, actually can be solved like, if you plan properly. Okay, but the first four, which is a uh, nature of the this out is the term of nature of the biomass one so that this i don't think we can solve it okay but last one still okay because uh as long as we not really use food as a fuse that should be okay for example we use the waste municipal solid waste which cannot be a food then it's good enough but this commercial issue we can solve if we plan properly we have expert that should be okay okay Let's continue with uh okay, biomass tree and photovoltaics actually uh okay biomass uh how you create the biomass how you generate biomass actually come from the photosynthesis okay and then here we come up with uh how you generate biomass the number how you calculate so you can see that the forester use the term U to refer to the productive capacity of a forest the forest here is referred to biomass of how you generate biomass resources. And U class are measured in cubic meter per hectare per year. Okay, they use a U class. So you can see, for example, let's say a U class of 12, it has mean that the annual timber increment is 12 meter cube per hectare. Okay, of course, different species of the tree have the different U and maximum can up to class 22. It can grow the fastest. Okay. And according to the calculation, the forest of U class 15 power per annum. Fire power is mean that just in terms of heat energy. You haven't converted to electricity yet. The conversion rate is lower than 40%. Okay. And then if you compare with the solar photovoltaics, I would say that uh, you plant tree as a biomass source is not a good idea. Okay. Uh, I think at least 10 times so photo, solar photovoltaics is at least 10 times more efficient than you plant tree as a biomass resources and then you burn it to generate uh, electricity in terms of uh, economy and efficiency that is not that uh, convincing using the biomass but of course if you say that at the time you plant the biomass to plant the tree actually um, you generate oxygen to the environment so this which uh, solar photovoltaics cannot uh, supply, cannot produce, okay? But this is not a good idea. Lah. So it means that uh, we won't plant the tree as a biomass resources. We won't create the biomass resources as a fuse. But what actually, why we need to study the biomass? Actually, we said about the opportunity we cannot afford to waste. This meaning that I use the waste to produce electricity. I use the biomass waste to produce electricity, but I'm not actually generating biomass as a fuse for the energy. Okay, so therefore using the productive forest as energy collector is not feasible. However, if you use the waste product, waste energy already collected, then it's equation different. Where for example, waste product from the palm oil. We don't use oil, oil we already collected for food or for other purposes but now we use a waste empty food branch or others to generate electricity then it's totally different okay yeah then currently the world population use only about seven percent of the annual production of biomass and that three percent actually is, is abundant we just throw away okay the reason is not fully utilized because not worth for utilization. Yeah, you pay more money than you 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 just throw away over there. Okay, you just throw the biomass and then they buy energy from other things from the fossil fuels. Okay, because it will be in terms of price, it will be cheaper. Okay, rather than you recycle and reuse the biomass. But what you can think of is we need to take care of the environment. Then we should do this. Okay. 
90% of the existing biomass power plant use wood residue, and there are currently 115 power plants in the world that will burn biomass to generate electricity. But most of them is just um, generate for the own use. Uh, okay, a very less power plant actually, very less biomass power plant actually generate electricity and connect to the grid. Okay. Okay, so this is a harvest piece from renewable energy. Okay, same thing from solar, hydro, wind, and also biomass. Actually, we harvest the waste, but we're not using something useful to convert to energy. Okay, we are harvesting the waste. This is not abundant and not used for anything else. For example, wind, hydro, and then uh, uh, solar. Okay, so this is what is our main concern. What we want to do, we get the waste. We harvest, harvest the waste from renewable energy. Okay, then let's talk about the process of converting biomass or biofuels into different type of the electricity. Oh, oh sorry, different process convert to electricity. So in general, there are three categories over here: thermochemical biochemical and RO chemical. Okay. And all of each category still have their own subcategory. For example, for thermal chemical, they have the combustion. Okay. Uh, okay. Like, if you read on the word thermal chemical, it means that you supply heat and then the biomass will have a chemical reaction. Okay. Produce electricity for you. Produce energy in terms of heat. Okay, so in other words, actually, uh, we use the heat to promote the chemical transformation of biomass into a energy and chemical product. Okay, mainly it's a heat, lah. The, the raw energy, energy that we get is heat through combustion. Combustion is just we burn it. Okay, next one is through pyrolysis. Pyrolysis is actually the similar to combustion. We also burn it, but burn at the different condition. Combustion normally is a uh, we burn it with the sufficient of oxygen. Okay, so in this case, uh, you will have a complete combustion, and the final product will be H two O and CO two carbon dioxide and water. But pyrolysis is you supply the heat, but you not have any. You do not produce. You don't provide a uh, combustion. Just heat. You give the heat to break the complex. Uh, hydrocarbon of the biomass, okay, to get make it as a simpler form. For example, uh, the make the to make the charcoal is one of the pyrolysis process. Okay, or maybe gasification, also one of the uh, pyrolysis process. Which we supply heat but not we not burn the product. So in other words we can say that uh, we burn it at the insufficient of oxygen. Okay, maybe at certain part we burn certain part, we don't burn, but we just apply the heat. Okay, I will explain more in, in the next part, pyrolysis. So the end product will have the gases, liquid, and solid. Solid here is a charcoal. Gases is mostly on the seed gas from the gasification. And then liquid can be a tar, okay, T-A-R, the tar. Okay, it's a liquid, liquid uh, carbon that can be used as a fuse. Okay. And then next one we have the biochemicals. Biochemical bio is mean that uh, organic. Okay, how how you do the organic process to convert from this uh, biomass into the energy? So you can see that here we have fragmentation. Fragmentation is a anaerobic digestion or anaerobic process, which uh, uh can be done through this um bacteria, microorganism. So you break down the glucose into the simpler form. Hey, sorry. So it can get the alcohol fragmentation. Okay, this is a process we get uh, uh, ethanol. Which type of alcohol can be used as a fuse? And then next, we have the digestion. If you read from here, digestion is mean that digest by the organism. Or more likely, it will be the microorganism. They digest the biomass and they will release the biogas, which is the mostly methane gas. Okay, 
So we call it digestion. It's done by biochemical. And the last one is the biophotosynthesis. If you read from here, photolysis, it means that the, the water, water, we know that water has a H2O, hydrogen, two hydrogen, and one oxygen. And this process, biophotolysis process, we have break the water into the hydrogen and oxygen. It looks very nice, something like a few cell, but this one is the other biochemical. Biochemical is mean that this biophotolysis process is done by the microorganism, such as uh, maybe uh, microalgae or maybe uh, cyanobacteria. Okay, they have this uh, uh, potential, they have this ability to convert water into the hydrogen and oxygen. Of course, you need to supply the sunlight. That's why we call it photolysis, something, something like photosynthesis. Okay, but this one is by the microorganism, but not by the plant. But uh, the process is very, very slow, so that uh, I don't think we can use it for any uh, purposes. Yes, it can release the hydrogen, but uh, maybe have a lot of research still have to be done, how to speed up. Okay. And then the last one is the agrochemical. And then from this agrochemical, we have the fuse extraction and ester, esterification. Esterification. We esterize the, the fuse okay, into the biodiesel. Okay. And this fuel extraction can be in terms of uh, something like we have the raw palm oil, just store in the fuse. So sorry, store in the fruit. Fruit, so then we extract it. So we call it as a fuse extraction. Okay, so we'll go through one by one and how is the process and also the advantage and disadvantage of each of them. Okay, first we start from the most simplest one, which is the combustion. We burn, we get heat, and heat can be used to produce energy. Okay, first, this is the combustion of biomass fuel to heat. Uh, burning a fresh food plant residue from the oil pump, refinery, burning wood waste, and it can be using charcoal and coal fire boiler. So it can mean that you can put in this uh, biomass into the charcoal or coal fire boiler. They can share the same boiler. The heat is used to produce steam to run the steam in the month that produce electricity. So it means that you generate heat and the heat will boil the water. Okay, water will produce steam and steam will run the turbine. And this is the full complete process of the thermal chemical combustion. So we start from here. Okay, so this is the storage of biomass, and you can see that you have the feet, feet stroke at the bottom. So the biomass should be cut into a small size so that uh, the air fuel mixture can be done properly. Okay, if you put one piece of wood, you can see that you will burn very slow. So at end of it, the heat produced also very less. So you should make it as small as possible, as many gaps as possible, so that air and fuel can mix properly. Okay, so after this, you supply the fuels to the chamber to burn here. Okay, you burn the biomass fuels and then you produce heat to boil the water. Okay, so once the water uh, exit uh, to become a superator steam, you will release the steam to turn to rotate the turbine. The pressure from the steam we use to rotate the turbine. Okay, and then the turbine will rotate the generator and produce electricity which connected to the grid. Okay, it's very direct forward uh, process, but there's still a few uh, control you can see here. So after the fuse go through the turbine, now the fuse have, sorry, the, the steam have less energy, then you need to recycle the steam. So before you recycle, you have to make sure that the steam condenses into the liquid form. So we need to go through the um, um, heat exchanger over here or condenser. Okay, and at the same time, because now you're removing the heat, because you want the steam to condense into the water, so you're removing the heat. So from here, the remove heat can be used for district district heating network is needed. Lah. Let's say, for example, hot water supply. 
okay, to a building or what. By Malaysia, normally uh, we won't do that. Lah. Okay, first, uh, environment is too hot. Not much uh, household need the hot water supply. And second is the distance from this uh, power plant. Normally, it's very far from the uh, residential area. Okay, so you transfer the heat to that location. When you reach the location, then the heat already gone, fully lost. Okay, so in Malaysia, we not really recover the heat, but in a colder climate country. That actually is a, it's very useful to heat up the environment. Okay, then after that, after condense, we get the water and then we repeat the uh, heating again and produce steam. Okay, and then you can see that end product from this burning, we have the ash. Okay, and the ash is actually the due to the incomplete combustion. It's actually a carbon. Okay, so it means that if you have a complete combustion, you should not have any ash. Okay, and of course, other than carbon, we still have a little amount of the uh, other elements such as calcium, magnesium, potassium, or phosphorus. Okay. And uh, I think everyone of you burn something at home before. Let's say you burn a piece of paper, you will see a wood. So you will see the ash, definitely. So it means that you, we will never achieve the complete combustion at home or open burning. Okay? Definitely you will see the ash after the burning. Yes, it less very less, but still have the ash. Okay? So it means that this ash normally it has a very complex hydrocarbon bonding. So we are not able to break the bond with this amount of heat. Okay, so in order to burn completely, you need to have reach the very high temperature and pressure. But of course, to burn different, uh, I, I, I cannot tell you what is the value of the temperature and pressure need to burn the ash. Okay, but uh, because different ash have the different uh, hydrocarbon bonding. So they may need different type of uh, different amount of energy in terms of pressure and heat to break the bond. Okay, but we see the ash is mean that the, the combustion process uh, do not reach the very high temperature. Okay, if you can reach very high temperature, then suppose we all the ash will be completely burnt, all the carbon will be completely burnt. Okay, and then after the burning, same thing, you will release the carbon dioxide and water. If the com combustion is complete, you will release carbon dioxide and water in general. Okay? And then because of the biomass have the impurity. Okay? Because a different di different type of tree have dif let's say different plant have different composition. They not only have the hydrocarbon, they still have cal calcium, magnesium, potassium, and phosphorus. And these are impurity that after you burn it, you will release to the environment. For example, uh, other than carbon dioxide and uh, water, huh? you still have the sulfur. And sulfur can be the sulfur dioxide or sulfur trioxide. Okay, same thing, you have the nitrogen oxide and nitrogen trioxide. Okay, something like we call it NOx, X it means can be two or can be three, and SOx, sulfur oxide or three oxides. Okay, and this is actually a uh, main uh, main element for this exit rate. Okay, and some other biomass they have the heavy metal, so that there's a lot of uh, uh, pollutants actually leads to the environment if you burn the biomass compared to the fossil fuels. Natural gas and petrol are very pure hydrocarbon. So that when you burn natural gas and petrol, it won't release any other than hydro, uh, H2O and uh, CO2. There's not much, un, not much pollutant you release to the environment. It'll be easier to control if you use the natural gas and petrol. Of course, the coal is other story. Like coal has very high content of sulfur. So you burning coal will actually release the sulfur oxide or sulfur dioxide, which create the acid rain. But same thing, you burn the biomass, you also have to release this kind of uh, pollutants. But good thing is the amount of the sulfur in the biomass is much lesser than the amount of sulfur content in the coal. 
So we still can say that the uh, burning of biomass is greener than burning of coal. Just compared to burning of coal, uh, if compared to natural gas and petrol, definitely biomass is have more pollutant than that. Okay. But whichever one to release to the environment can be controlled using this uh, flue gas screening and screening. You can make a filter, you can neutralize, because uh, as I said, there's sulfur dioxide and nitrogen oxide is actually toxic and cause we call the acidic. So what you can do, you neutralize the acidic substance. Maybe put in some alkaline material, spray it as thermal water. Okay, so once you spray it, then it will neutralize, then you only release to environment. Okay, then you won't release to the environment, uh, which will not harmful to the environment. This is what we can do. Lah. Okay, still able to control. Okay. Okay, so this is the entire process of uh, combustion in the biomass. Okay, then same thing. What is the problem here? You can see that low temperature and quality of heat generated if you burn biomass. And it's more efficient when used for low heating purposes for cooling domestic heating. Burning biomass is easier and very cheap. And now we can improve the efficiency of the biomass power plant by using this combined heat and power plant CHP okay, to improve the efficiency. Okay, and then the operation, operating and fuel costs are comparable to fossil fuels usage only if the environmental impact cost to take them into the consideration. This is carbon sequestration and carbon sinking. Okay, uh, when you are burning the fossil fuels, as we know that that's not carbon neutral, where you will generate extra carbon dioxide. So to get the same environmental effect, you need to sequenize, sequestration the carbon and sink the carbon. It means that you can see how they do it. After the carbon dioxide released, they won't release the carbon dioxide to the environment, but they will squeeze it underground, okay, and then store it underground or under the seabed, okay? You can see that injected artificially into the coal mine, where the mine, after you take out the coal, the mine is empty. There's a lot of space. So now they put in the carbon dioxide into the ground. It's a good idea, but it's actually very costly, okay? So if you include the cost to do this carbon sequestration and carbon sinking, actually uh, biomass fuels have the cost comparable to fossil fuels, okay? But of course, in Malaysia, we never do this kind of uh, process because it's actually very costly, okay? And high capital costs and only variable if supported by subsidized for environmental grid. So in other words, biomass is still more, much more expensive than fossil fuels. You need a government support or you need a subsidized for renewable energy, Okay, so in other words, uh, solar energy is much better than biomass in that case. Lah. Okay, then uh, let's talk about the CHP. Just now we say we can use this CHP to improve the efficiency of biomass power plant. And actually what's mean by CHP? So it means that uh, other than, okay, after you burn the biomass, uh, maybe 35% of the energy can be used to generate steam, but 65% of the energy will be released to the environment as in the term of heat. Okay, so for that case, uh, what if we can utilize the 65% of heat which is released to the environment? Then that is a very good idea, and it definitely will increase the overall efficiency of the power generation. And that one we call as a co-generation. Okay, it means we combine the heat and power. We not only generate power, but we also generate heat and we utilize both heat and power. You can see that uh, this definitely we have the lower emission to the environment, in particular CO2, because you supply the heat to the household, where the household do not need to use the electricity to generate the heat again. Okay, so in other words, you will reduce the CO2 emission to the environment. 
And this is opportunity to move toward more decentralized form of electricity generation and to improve the local and general security of supply. So it means that most of the power plant is at the rural area, this uh, biomass power plant. And from here, you can supply heat to the uh, household. Okay, so that not everyone rely on the grid supply of electricity. Okay, but of course the planning is much difficult, uh, greater than everyone use electricity. Okay, and in Malaysia, as I say, it's not very uh, viable and not very uh, good idea to use this. Yes, the environment is too hot. Okay, but this process normally used in the Euro country, where the heat energy is very important for them. Everyone at their home, they have a heater. Okay, heater to heat up the environment, not to heat up the water. But in Malaysia, we just need the hot water supply. We don't really need to heat up the environment. We still need to, to lower down the temperature. Okay, it's a good idea, but not applicable for every location especially in Malaysia. Next, uh, as I said that uh, biomass is not very useful because of we have the low calorie value and then cost the uh, transportation costs is very high. So mostly this power plant will not stand be a stand alone power plant. So it means that you have to attach to something else, maybe attach to the supply because you can see that they need a uh, heating okay in terms of sterilization into heat and uh, sterilize the fruit using the steam hot steam and how you produce the steam you have to burn the you have to boil the water to produce steam and the burning or boiling of the water actually consumes a lot of energy because water has very high heat capacity okay so that whenever you want to heat up the water, you will need a lot of energy. And this definitely will have a very big impact to the, their electricity bill. Okay. So how do you want to solve the problem? They can use the biomass energy because they have the fuse exactly on their uh, factory of the pump oil mill. Okay. They need the energy here and they also have the biomass energy on the spot. So why don't they just directly burn the fuse? Okay, but you want to cogenerate the energy and then connect to the grid is not a good idea. But now you burn on the spot just to produce heat for the boiler, and produce heat to sterilize the fresh palm palm oil fruit. Okay, so you can see that palm oil fruit. Before that, you need to sterilize, kill all the bacteria, and then soften the the the, the tissue or fiber inside the fruit so that they can squeeze to squeeze and press out the oil okay so that we use a lot of heat energy and after squeezing and pressing they will have a empty food brush okay which uh, no use at all then now they can use this empty food brush as a fuse for the power plant okay this is a biomass power plant so immediately they can generate um, heat to uh, to supply the power and in terms of electricity and heat for their entire process of the pump oil mill. Okay, this actually uh, is a very good idea, and I think um, it is actually um, implemented in most of the pump oil mill, or else their cost of electricity is very very high. So this is uh, one of the method to reduce the uh, cost of electricity and reduce the production cost as they have definitely a lot of empty food branch and other than that they still have the efficiency from fiber okay which definitely will generate in their farm oil okay so the, in this case definitely uh, biomass is very useful okay only at a specific case specific location biomass can be much better than others for this example, for this example, if I want to use a PV photovoltaic, do you think this is possible? Mostly not, because uh, photovoltaic is a uh, generate a very less amount of energy per unit unit area. So definitely, you will not have 
produce enough energy to power the plant, which need to generate the steam every time, a lot of steam every time. Okay, so the best resources, the best renewable energy to use in this palm oil mill actually is the biomass. Okay, so we have to look on the location uh, and the uh, requirement so that we can say that biomass have their advantages at a certain condition, at a certain location only. Okay. Okay, so the advantage of this uh, thermal chemical combustion process is first, we can reduce the amount of solid waste. If you burn uh, the solid waste, lah, so it can be the municipal waste, can be the plantation waste. And the high temperature combustion reduces the complex hydrocarbon into simpler and less toxic substance. You burn the complex hydrocarbon and make it less toxic substance. And next, there is a, a lot of this advantage over here. Burning release, burning release harmful chemicals found in municipal solid waste, for example, heavy metal, you have the lead and cadmium from the battery, mercury from the fluorescent tube, and the battery. And product of this portion of more toxic ash release a cunning organic toxin, which uh, this toxin is we can cause cancer. Lah. That's why we call it cunning organic. And release of the particular matter into the atmosphere. So you can see that it's not really great because it may release a harmful gas, uh, heavy matter to the environment. But of course, the above disadvantages can be mitigated by separating the harmful waste from municipal solid waste. So the waste separation is very important if you want to put the municipal solid waste. Okay, so it means that whichever uh, harmful or whichever do not have any burning heat, burning value, then you have to remove it from the uh, from, from the municipal solid waste. But this is actually very costly and very time consuming. Okay, and then we also can use of an uh, empty pollution device like scrubber, scrubber and uh, electrostatic precipitation in through channel. Okay, this is uh, how, we, how we filter out. Lah. Okay, so the, in this scrubber, we actually uh, we neutralize. You can see that we actually spray uh, alkaline water on this uh, gas, exhaust gas, so that uh, it, it can uh, neutralize the acidic gases before it leads to the environment. Okay, and this is the electrostatic precipitation. This actually uh, will remove the particle from the gas field. Particle, uh, if it, in particles mean that solid. Uh, it, there's a hole in the solid. Okay, and this can be used the uh, electric energy, which creates the electrostatic charge. So you hold all the particles that pass through the, the, the channel. Okay, and this is a very good idea also to remove the particle before you release to the environment. So whichever gas that you release to the environment must be neutralized and no particle. Okay, especially the heavy matter. Okay, if you act as a particle and it's very harmful to our lung. Okay, let's continue. And these are the operation problem in the biomass combustion. So first, uh, complete combustion produce minimum pollution and depends on the combustion chamber temperature, the tubers of the burning gas, resident time, and the fuse air ratio and also the fuse characteristic. So for fossil fuels, to achieve complete combustion is much easier. But for biomass, because uh, biomass have different size, different calorie value, different type, different composition. So you want to adjust the temperature, air fuse mixture, oxygen time of the burning actually very complicated. Okay, so make it most of the case biomass power plant do not have a complete combustion. So it means that the gas released to the environment is actually harmful if you not process it. Do not filter it before you release to the environment. Okay, the next biomass is very difficult to handle and combust due to the role and density and present of the inorganic constituent. 
this inorganic constitute uh, uh, something like a material which will not uh, supply energy or cannot be burned. Okay, for example, soil. Soil will not have any protect, oh sorry, will not have any chemical energy. You burn the soil, you will not get anything. Okay, soil, metal, sediment, okay, or maybe silica. All these are actually, silica means sand, okay. So these are actually uh, content in the biomass, especially municipal solid mix. And it's occupied the space, but it won't produce any energy. Okay, so that is a, uh, make a lot of trouble to the system. You need to maintain your problem, trouble. You need to clean the uh, chamber from time to time to remove this kind of the inorganic constitute. Okay, sometimes sometime a biomass contains significant amount of chlorine, sulfur, and potassium. This is naturally contained in the biomass. In the tree, in the wood, naturally they have this. Okay, so the list of these components may lead to the heavy decomposition on heat transfer surface, resulting in redu reduced heat transfer and enhanced corrosion rate. So this is actually, uh, yes, it's, it contains in the wood, but now you burn the wood. So this chlorine, sulfur, and potassium will release to the furnace before it release to the environment. And before that, it will decompose composition on this heat transfer surface. Remember that after pass through the the, the steam turbine, you need a, a heat heat exchanger or condenser to remove the heat. Okay, so for this case, this chlorine, sulfur, and potassium will stick to the heat transfer surface. So end up with the heat transfer rate will be much, much slower, slower. Okay, and it also will corrupt the surface. So make up, you need to service your your heat transfer surface from time to time and you have to change it from time to time, which will cause the unscheduled shutdown. Okay, it's a very uh, bad condition when you have this in the uh, chamber, heating chamber, burning chamber. Okay, then we also have one method called biomass coal firing. As we know that biomass always have low energy density. Okay, and then if you have low energy density, you will not reach a very high uh, thermal chemical efficiency. So in that case, uh, it will increase the overall cost of the electricity generated from the biomass energy. And the researcher come up with a new technique called biomass coal firing. Coal is mean that burn together. Okay, firing, coal firing, burn together. So you have to burn this biomass together with the coal, which adding the biomass as a partial substitute fuse in high efficiency coal boiler. And there is a little or no loss in the total boiler efficiency after adjusting the combustion output for the new fuel structure. Okay, so as uh, we cannot use 100% of biomass to produce electricity because it will have very low uh, thermal efficiency. It will have very low output, but now I mix the biomass with the coal. Okay, and then end up with I still get the same efficiency and I use less coal. I use 15% less coal compared to the complete coal uh, power. It's a good idea. Okay, and at the same time, we can reduce the greenhouse gas emission because the carbon dioxide released from the burning of biomass is actually carbon neutral. Okay, so it's a good idea to do the coal firing. Uh, well, we, for this case, be able to utilize the renewable energy and still preserve the efficiency of the oil. Okay, but of course you cannot use more than 15% uh, based on the research. You get more than that, then uh, you will reduce the efficiency of coal power plant. Coal power plant. But this 15% of biomass uh, also very subjective, uh, subject to what kind of biomass you put in. I get uh, on other research, they say that when you, you do the coal firing, most of the case, the efficiency of the power plant will reduce, at least will slightly reduce. So you want to maintain the efficiency also very difficult. Okay, it's a good idea, but difficult to control and maintain by a mass coal firing. 
Okay, so we are done for combustion. So we are going through uh, the process and what is the problem when you do the combustion. Okay, that's why combustion is the most direct uh, method to release the energy from the biomass. And I would say that it also is a most efficient method, faster, fast and efficient. But they create a lot of environmental issues. That's why we still have a few uh, substitution methods, which is uh, slightly slower, but it's better for environment. Okay. So the first one, we call it as a gasification, biomass gasification. This is also a type of the burning process. And uh, we call it gasification because it will convert the solid biomass into the gases. That's why gasify. Okay. A process of converting solid biomass fuels into the gases, convertible gas. And this convertible gas, we call it as a syngas. And the main uh, composition of syngas is carbon monoxide. Of course, we cannot generate 100% of carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide is generated from insufficient of combustion. Remember that if you have a complete combustion, you should leave the carbon dioxide carbon dioxide and water, CO2. But when you do not have enough oxygen, the burning process will have the insufficient oxygen. Then you have only CO. They cannot have CO2 because oxygen is not enough. Okay? And this CO actually is, can be used as a fuel, which is a low heating value fuel. Sink gas can be more efficient because it can be combusted at higher temperature compared to the solid biomass. So they, to achieve the higher combustion temperature, higher combustion efficiency, first they need to convert the solid biomass into the syn gas. This one we call it as a gasification. And this gas has a lower calorie value compared to the natural gas. And substantial reduction in diesel and oil cost. Temperature and pressure control are difficult. Okay. So let's look on the process in the gasification. So we have the four, in general, we have the four general process in the gasification. We have drying, pyrosis, combustion, and reduction. So first, drying. Why we need the drying? Because the biomass you add into the furnace is actually bad. Okay, or even, even you, you say it's dry, it still contains some of the water. So first step is to remove all the water. So I burn the biomass. Biomass contains C, H, and O, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. So I burn this biomass so that not burn, I just produce heat to the biomass. Okay? And it will release the H2O. All the water will become the water vapor and release to the environment. So we call it drying. Second step is a pyrolysis. Pyrolysis same thing. You supply heat, but you don't supply air. Okay, so it means that you heat up the biomass and turn the biomass into the charcoal and tar. And this charcoal and tar have the simpler form of the hydrocarbon bonding so that it will be easily burned. Okay, if you have charcoal and you have the raw wood, you will say you feel that the charcoal is much easier to burn because it's already break down into the simpler form. Okay, so second step, we have pyrosis. Just to change the structure of biomass become simple. Just break the bond. Okay, and the charcoal is a solid and tar is a liquid. Okay, but both are actually in the simpler form of the hydrocarbon. And then next, we have combustion. This combustion is to supply oxygen to the burning and you will release the H2O and CO2. Okay, it's a complete combustion here. Okay, why we need a complete combustion here? Because you can see H2O and CO2 is no use at all. You can release to the environment. But you can see that uh, you need heat for driving, you need heat for pyrosis. Okay, so that this combustion is actually to supply the heat for driving and pyrolysis. Without the combustion, you are not able to do the driving and pyrolysis. Okay, so the, this process actually uh, is, is happened on, in a different space on the furnace, but happened at the same time. 
One part you do the driving, one part you do the paralysis, one part you do the combustion, and another part you do the reduction. Now you, you have hot charcoal, and then you add in the CO2 and H2O. It will become hydrogen and carbon monoxide. And again, this reduction process must be in a condition of no oxygen. Okay, reduction and paralysis should not have any oxygen supply. Okay, and combustion, you need a full oxygen supply. That is mean that how you want to separate the process. Some need a very high oxygen supply, some do not want any oxygen. Okay, and again, they are all processed in the same furnace, same location. How you want to solve it? You can see that. Let I show you the gasification chamber. Okay, we look on the first part of the uh, this part. This is a gasification chamber. So you can see that you, you input, you fit in the wood from the top. Okay, and then here are the wood, the raw wood which are wet. Okay, and second level, you have the combustion. And remember, the combustion needs the oxygen to process. You need to supply oxygen from the side. Okay, you supply oxygen. Here, combustion. After the combustion, you will have the hot gas which flow through this wet wood. And at the same time, you will dry the wood. Okay, you can see combustion produces heat to dry the wood on the top. Okay, and then same thing. Combustion will produce the pyrolysis process at the bottom. Okay, because oxygen is lighter. So when you go in, definitely you move out. Move upward. Upward. It won't move downward. So in this case, actually, it's uh, somewhere you have the no oxygen. You have heat and no oxygen. So you will have this uh, pyrolysis process. Okay, and same thing. After pyrolysis process, you need to shock the air from bottom, okay? Then H2O and CO2 from this combustion will pass through this uh, hot charcoal and produce this uh, carbon monoxide and hydrogen gas, okay? So can you see that? Driving is on the top, combustion, second level, uh, pyrolysis, third level, and reduction at the final level. Okay, and the flow must be in that way. Okay, you are not allowed, the air is not allowed to reach the reduction area, or else what you get will be carbon dioxide, not carbon monoxide. Carbon dioxide will not have any uh, burning energy anymore. It will not have any calorie value, but carbon monoxide still have the burning value, okay, or calorie value. Okay, so, the process seems very simple, but how you want to limit the air to reach the area for the pyrolysis and reduction? It is very, very challenging. So what is challenging here? You need to make sure all the oxygen supply for the combustion is fully utilized by the combustion. You get what I mean? Huh? You supply 100 kg of air inside. The combustion must use all of them or else the air will shut through this viruses and reduction level and it will make it make the carbon dioxide make the carbon monoxide become carbon dioxide okay so the amount of air supply is very critical cannot be too high cannot be too low if you supply too less air what happened to the combustion you you try to see when you're burning burning something and you cut off the oxygen supply of course the burning will stop okay so if you suppress too much less air, the combustion will have less heat. So you slow down the entire process. You suppress too many air, it will generate CO2, carbon dioxide, rather than carbon monoxide. Okay? The idea is very good to get the gas, to get the gas so that you have the higher thermal efficiency. But the process is much, much complicated compared to a simple combustion. Okay, so as I said, it's also not clearly widely used in this case, unless you have a very good expert which can able to control the air properly. Okay, so how they control, they burn, 
Okay, and then they must make sure that wood supply is the same type of the wood. If they supply different type of wood, you need different air fuse mixture. You need different amount of air supply. Okay, so this is actually very difficult. Wood supply must be the same. Okay, then they control the air input and then they measure the composition of gas output. I think they have a the device to measure gas composition. They can see how many percent of CO2, how many percent CO and something like this. Okay, they have to measure until you get a, a good composition. Then they only can use to burn, uh, to boil the boiler, to boil the water inside the boiler. And this boiler able to generate steam to run the turbine. And the rest is the same. Uh. So we generate steam, steam rotate turbine, and the turbine run the generator. And same thing, after the steam go through the turbine, you need to cool up the steam, maybe whether by the heat changer or by condenser or cooling tower. Okay, and then you cool down and then you can repeat the cycle. But whatever complicated is over here. Okay, this one we call gasification. Okay, this is the composition of steam gas in general. Okay, so you can see that they have H2, CO, CO2, CH4, and N2. H2 is hydrogen, 20 to 40%. CO, 35 to 40%. This is the main uh, composite component that we want. Okay, and then remember that this result is the best result they can get. So in other words, you get 40% of CO, uh, you, you consider very expert already. Okay, and H2 and CO and also CH4. CH4 is a methane gas. So this tree is actually able to produce energy, which has the heating value. Okay, and CO2 is a waste. Lah. So if you generate CO2, then uh, actually you are wasting the energy. And N2, N2 is a uh, nitrogen, which is a uh, content in the wood. Okay, and this N2 can be mixed with the oxygen. If you supply too many oxygen, uh, you will list NO2 or NO3, which is toxic and which is a contribution to the acid rain. Okay, so best way you release the N2. Don't supply too many oxygen, or else it will become NO2 or NO3, NO3 which is a toxic. Okay, CH4 is also come from methane gas. Uh. CH4 also come from this uh, burning of the uh, wood in the space of the insufficient of oxygen. When you do not have enough oxygen, some of them will become CO, you combine with oxygen, the carbon will combine with oxygen, will become CO, or some of the carbon will combine with the hydrogen to become CH4. Okay, and both are actually quite useful, like, can be used as a burning gas. But the condition is must be insufficient of oxygen. So the entire gasification process must be insufficient of oxygen at the pyrosis and reduction. Okay. So this uh, uh, process of the gasification. Good idea, but difficult to control. Okay, last one, advantage of syn gas. It can be combusted at higher temperature and this modular can be a smaller size, okay? Interchangeable with the natural gas and less water content. You can see that you already dry the bio, solid biomass wood. So definitely there's not much water content inside the gases, okay? And then uh, what we can do with this uh, seed gas? You can change with the natural gas. You can burn in the, in the power plant that use the natural gas. You can mix with the natural gas. You also can use in the uh, diesel generator. Okay, a conventional diesel generator, we use diesel only. But you also can use this uh, sim gas. You pump the sim gas into the diesel generator through the air inlet. Because diesel, you want to burn the diesel, of course you have to supply the air. But instead of supplying the raw air, I supply the raw air mixture with this sim gas. Okay. So that uh, I have more fuels inside. Okay, so in this case, you will use less diesel than you use the pure diesel. 
Okay, you can see that you can just do the simply simple modification. Then you supply the sync test into the diesel generator. And based on this method, you're able to reduce the diesel consumption by up to 60%. It's a very good idea. Of course, you cannot fully use the sink gas and don't use the diesel. Okay, because sink gas have low calorie value. So 60% you use the sink gas and 40% you use the diesel. And this can be do properly in the general diesel generator. And the process is actually very simple. Just pump in the uh, sink gas through the air in the of the diesel generator. Then everything done. Okay. Okay, I think yeah, you young. <laughs> okay, I think we are stop here lah. Six p.m. already. So any other question? We will stop at gasification lah. The next we will continue next time. Okay. Uh, now thank you. Okay, good. So I think uh we we'll stop here today. Thank you for your time and see you on Wednesday. And thank, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Bye. Thank you.